today's lesson is an investigation into a cubic number called four cubed. You can see that four cubed is four times four times four, which is 64. We're going to basically x-ray, pull it apart and see what's what are the constituents inside of the four cubed. So um, there is a word for this where th the lesson is called gnomons. There's a thing called square gnomons, but we're going to be investigating cubic gnomons. And by examining what's inside the cube, we're going to discover harmonic 137, which has got to do with the Vitruvian angle. We're going, and we're going to discover an amazing marriage of the reciprocals of 27 and 37. So to explain what a gnomon is, I'll just do a really quick um, diagram. A gnomon is when you have a sundial, when the sun's shining on a plate, there's normally a vertical stick like that. So as the sun shines on this, the stick, it leaves a shadow. So that vertical line, that shape is called the gnomon. And in, in geometry, a gnomon is when you have a square or a parallelogram and you take out the same shape. So if I took out this two by two square out of the three by three square, what I end up with is um, one, two, three, four, five. So that L shape there is called the gnomon. So we can summarize and say that two squared plus the odd number, one, two, three, four, five, the, the L shape makes three squared. So there's a whole theory of squared numbers are, are formed from smaller squares and gnomon. So we're going to examine this gnomon here. So to understand how to get four squared, we say it is three squared. We've got three squared is nine. We've got the nine, there's the three squared, but we're going to add to it this L shape, this gnomon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So by adding seven to the three squared, we end up with four squared. So that's a, a basic introduction into gnomon. But what we're interested in is we want to go multidimensional. We want to go into cubic gnomons. So I want... So Today's lesson is to look at the four by four cubed. And you can see that I've done it in a way, there's the basic, it's a basically a hexagon shape. It is a hexagonal, the shadow of the cube is hexagonal, but, and you can see that I've done four by four by four on all the sides. So there is 64 cells. We can even give it a name and call it cubelets. But what I want to do is I want to pull out, I want to extract out of, out of this, its next smaller cube. So I'm going to say, here's the four cubed, but I want to subtract the next smaller cube contained in there, which is three cubed. And 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 you and the, and that's an interesting number because we're going to get 37. So how did I get 37? What I needed to do was, I'm going to draw the three by three cubed here. One, two, three. So you have to sort of squint your eyes. And if you can see that I'm actually making a cube in there, if you can see that cube in there, right? Oh, there's my cube. And I'm going to pull it out. And what's, what's left is a three-dimensional shell, a three-dimensional cubic gnomon. So I'm going to pick that up and show you what that is. So, uh, so inside this... So inside this shell, if we, when all this falls apart, you'll see that when I take the three by three out, I'm left with um, 27 little shells. Um, so so okay, here's, an, here's another diagram of it. So just so you can appreciate what I'm doing. When you um, have the four by four, we pull out the three by three and we're left. This is what we're interested in. That shell in 3D, the gnomon, is composed of 37, 37 shell uh, cubelets. So there's a relationship between this. So, so let's start from the beginning. Now we are, this is what we're going to be talking about today. But let's just look at the first one. So if you have a two, two cubed, we know that two cubed, we know that two cubed has eight cubelets like that. So this is two by two cube and if I take a, if I take out the one the smaller one if I take if I take out one cubed I end up with seven because eight minus one is seven 
if I do it the next way, if I say I'm going to take out, here's the three by three, but I'm going to pull out the next smaller one, two cubed, I end up with um, three cubed minus two cubed equals 19. And if we just go a bit larger, let's say five cubed minus four cubed, we end up with another number called 61. So there's a sequence here, seven. You could start from one, seven, 19, 37, 61. Straight away, you can ascertain that these are prime numbers and they've got a special name. They're called Cuban primes. And I'm going to be doing more work on that. But like I said, this investigation is, there's something special about the third, the, the three cubed is 27. And over here, we've got 37. There's something very special. It's all contained within the 64. So I'm going to investigate the reciprocal of these two numbers. So I'm going to say, what's the reciprocal of one on 27? So one on 27 means if you get your calculator and go one divided by 27, we're going from the macro of whole numbers into really fine quantum numbers. We're going to get a very small number called point zero three seven zero three seven zero three seven. And you can see that, oh, it's um it's a repeating decimal, it's a circular decimal, but it's based on triplets, like three there, three there three there and that's really interesting about the three but when something repeats we don't want to keep writing that because that takes too long so we simplify it and say that the reciprocal of 27 is 0 0.037 oh three seven it they used to put dots on top of the numbers but now we just put a line above it so if you see the bar it's called a vinculum when you see the vinculum or the bar over that it means 037 repeats forever so this is very precise. Now, the other investigation is we're going to look, we've done the 27, let's look at 37. So the reciprocal of 37 means one divided by 37 equals, this is the interesting bit, it's 0 0.027027, 0 027 forever. So you put dot, dot, dot means it goes forever, three dots. So, and to simplify it, it's called 0 0.027 repeater. So that can be done and checked easily on a calculator. That's fine. So just, it's interesting that each of these numbers, the 27 and the 37 that form this whole structure, contain one another. It's kind of a marriage because 27 is based on the 37 and the decimalization of 37 contains the, its counterpart, 27. So there's... They're like a coupling. It's very interesting. And that's why I'm calling it the marriage of the reciprocals, 27 and 37. And just to conclude that there's another important um, relationship between 27 and 37 that make up this shell and the whole number. So I'm asking here, what is 37, the relationship as a division or a ratio, 37 divided by 27? We're putting a question mark here. What is the solution so we 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 go on our calculator 37 divided by 27 it happens to equal 1.370 but the 370 goes 370 370 forever so i'll put a bar on it so it's 1.37 repeater and, and in harmonic maths we're permitted that that decimal here we're allowed to to grow the number or we can go the other way. So we can maximize or minimize if we go this way or that way, because it's still based on, it's a connection between the macro and the micro. So this is called harmonic 137. Where it's, even though you see 1.37, we're allowed to um, summarize and say that the cubic structure of the four cubed, 64, which has got to do with the 64 codons in our DNA are ringing a harmonic um, coupling or dancing of the integers 27 and 37. This is sacred geometry at its highest order, at its highest level, and it's in our DNA.
So this is an amazing relationship. We have the number 64, which has got to do with DNA. We know it's 4Q, but we didn't know that 64 was based on the sum of 27 and 37. And I'll just show you a little bit more about this relationship. We, we realize that 64 is, um, we know it's four times four times four, which is four cubed. We know that, but it was composed of um, 37 on the shell and we divided it by 27 and we got 1.370 repeater. Now this number 1.37 keeps cropping up all the time. It's one of the most important numbers in the world of physics. It's called the fine structure constant. So, so great physicists like um, um, Feynman, Richard Feynman, um, they, they were the ones that were going down into the quantum and they're explaining it and they're obsessed about the reciprocal of the number one over one three seven. So one, the reciprocal of this physics number one three seven gives us point zero zero seven. So we call that the James Bond number. That's what we grew up on. But people, when they're doing the movies, they don't just choose random numbers. There's a knowledge. There is a secret knowledge embedded in the mass consciousness. So point oh oh seven is connected to um, energy and matter at the deepest level at the quantum level and the reason why this is also important is that if we have a circle so I'll just draw a circle here so if we have a circle um, there's the center point that's that's kind of the midpoint but we want to go a little bit higher here about there and about there and this angle here when we divide the 360 degrees of a circle by the golden ratio. So the golden ratio phi is 1.618. That's the key to the universe. When we segment the 360 degrees of a circle into its golden angle, we call this the phi angle. It gives us a larger section, this here, a larger section here, which is 222. 0.5 degrees and this little section here is known as 137.5 degrees so that's that's um the smaller section here it's like if you had a pizza and you cut out a smaller bit there's a larger bit so this golden angle is the key to what we call phyllotaxis so phyllotaxis is about is how plants distribute leaves if you have a vertical stem the leaves just don't come out at any angle. They obey the golden angle. Taxus means to turn in Latin. So the, the way that leaves turn a lot as they climb up the stem and distribute their leaves, they're trying to capture the sun. So this is all about um, the optimized solar energy for growth, for life. So the golden angle is the key. And here we found the golden angle inside the cube, the, the four cube. So I just wanted to let you know that um, the more we investigate through geometry, through high visual content, the more that we can actually see that there is a, a, a the way nature organizes itself. It's self-organized and it's done with beautiful whole numbers, with intelligent segmentation. So there's a there, it's not a mystery anymore. It's um, there is an, a divine order. We call this fixed design. Fixed design means that which is eternal, that which is timeless.